snow. The first snow of winter hit right before Thanksgiving break. School was closed, so we got an extra day of vacation. I was glad about that because I was so bummed about this whole August thing, and I just wanted some time to chill without having to see him every day. Also, waking up to a snow day is just about my favorite thing in the world. I love that feeling when you first open your eyes in the morning and you don't even know why everything seems different than usual. Then it hits you. Everything is quiet. No cars honking. No buses going down the street. Then you run over to the window, and outside everything is covered in white. The sidewalks, the trees, the cars on the street, your window panes. And when that happens on a school day and you find out your school is closed, well, I don't care how old I get, I'm always going to think that's the best feeling in the world. And I'm never going to be one of those grown-ups that use an umbrella when it's snowing. Ever. Dad's school was closed, too, so he took me and Jamie sledding down Skeleton Hill in the park. They say a little kid broke his neck while sledding down that hill a few years ago, but I don't know if this is actually true or just one of those legends. On the way home, I spotted this banged-up wooden sled kind of propped up against the old Indian rock monument. Dad said to leave it. It was just garbage, but something told me it would make the greatest sled ever. So... Dad let me drag it home, and I spent the rest of the day fixing it up. I superglued the broken slats together and wrapped some heavy-duty white duct tape around them for extra strength. Then, I spray-painted the whole thing white with the paint I had gotten for the alabaster sphinx I was making for the Egyptian Museum project. When it was all dry, I painted lightning in gold letters on the middle piece of wood, and I made a little lightning bolt symbol above the letters. It looked pretty professional, I have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about the sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I've ever ridden. So, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we'd been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow had become crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning all afternoon. We were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad practically had to drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had started turning gray and yellow, and then a rainstorm turned most of the snow to slush. When we got back to school on Monday, there was no snow left. It was rainy and yucky the first day back from vacation. A slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside, too. I nodded, hey, to August the first time I saw him. We were in front of the lockers. He nodded, hey, back. I wanted to tell him about lightning, but I didn't. Fortune favors the bold. Mr. Brown's December precept was, fortune favors the bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives when we did something very brave and how, because of it, something good happened to us. I thought about this a lot, to be truthful. I have to say that I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August. But I couldn't write about that, of course. I was afraid we'd have to read these out loud or Mr. Brown would put them up on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead, I wrote this lame thing about how I used to be afraid of the ocean when I was little. It was dumb, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wonder what August wrote about. He probably had a lot of things to choose from. Private school. My parents are not rich. I say this because people sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich, but that isn't true with us. Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have those kinds of jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't live in a big townhouse or in one of those dormant buildings along the park. We live on the top floor of a five-story walk-up we rent from an old lady named Doña Petra, all the way on the other side of Broadway. That's code for the section of North River Heights where people don't want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talking about things like, 
Can we do without an air conditioner for one more year? Or maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today at recess, I was hanging out with Julian and Henry and Miles. Julian, who everyone knows is rich, was like, I hate that I have to go back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring. Dude, but it's like Paris, I said like an idiot. Believe me, it's so boring, he said. My grandmother lives in this house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny, tiny village. I swear to God, nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh, wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the sidewalk. Yippee. I laughed. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though my parents are talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you doing over break? Said Julian. Just hanging out, I said. You're so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. I got this new sled that is so amazing. I was about to tell them about lightning, but Miles started talking first. I got a new sled too, he said. My dad got it from Hammaker Schlemmer. It's so state of the art. How can a sled be state of the art, said Julian. It was like $800 or something. Whoa, we should all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill. I said. That hill is so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding? I said. Some kid broke his neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like I was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it was an ancient Indian burial ground. Duh, he said. Anyway, It should be called Garbage Hill now. It's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross, like with soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He shook his head. I left my old sled there, said Miles. It was the crappiest piece of junk, and someone took it too. Maybe a hobo wanted to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where did you leave it, I said. By the big rock at the bottom of the hill, and I went back the next day, and it was gone. I couldn't believe somebody actually took it. Here's what we can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up to this golf course in Westchester that makes Skeleton Hill look like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I had started to walk away. I've got to get a book out of my locker. I lied. I just wanted to get away from them fast. I didn't want anyone to know that I was the hobo who had taken the sled. In science. I'm not the greatest student in the world. I know some kids actually like school, but I honestly can't say I do. I like some parts of school, like PE and computer class, and lunch and recess, but all in all... I'd be fine without school. And the thing I hate the most about school is all the homework we get. It's not enough that we have to sit through class after class and try to stay awake while they fill our heads with all this stuff we will probably never need to know, like how to figure out the surface area of a cube or what the difference is between kinetic and potential energy. I'm like, who cares? I've never, ever heard my parents say the word kinetic in my entire life. I hate science the most out of all my classes. We get so much work, it's not even funny. And the teacher, Miss Rubin, is so strict about everything, even the way we write our headings on the top of our papers. I once got two points off a homework assignment because I didn't put the date on top. Crazy stuff. When me and August were still friends, I was doing okay in science because August sat next to me and always let me copy his notes. August has the neatest handwriting of anybody I've ever seen who's a boy. Even his script is neat, up and down perfectly with really small round loopy letters. But now that we're ex-friends, it's bad because I can't ask him to let me copy his notes anymore. So I was kind of scrambling today, trying to take notes about what Ms. Rubin was saying, 
my handwriting is awful. When all of a sudden she started talking about the fifth grade science fair project, how we all had to choose a science project to work on. While she was saying this, I was thinking, we just finished the freaking Egypt project. Now we have to start a whole new thing? And then in my head, I was going, oh no. Like that kid in Home Alone with his mouth hanging open and his hands on his face. That was the face I was making on the inside. And then I thought of those pictures of melting ghost faces I've seen somewhere, where the mouths are open wide and they're screaming. Then all of a sudden, this picture flew into my head, this memory, and I knew what Summer had meant by bleeding scream. It's so weird how it all just came to me in this flash. Someone in homeroom had dressed up in a bleeding scream costume on Halloween. I remember seeing him a few desks away from me, and then I remember not seeing him again. Oh, man. It was August. All of this hit me in science class while the teacher was talking. Oh, man. I'd been talking to Julian about August. Oh, man. Now I understood. I was so mean. I don't even know why. I'm not even sure what I said, but it was bad. It was only a minute or two. It's just that... I knew Julian and everybody thought I was so weird for hanging out with August all the time, and I felt stupid. And I don't know why I said that stuff. I just was going along. I was stupid. I am stupid. Oh, God. He was supposed to come as Boba Fett. I would never have said that stuff in front of Boba Fett. But that was him. That bleeding scream sitting at the desk looking over at us. The long white mask with the fake squirting blood. The mouth opened wide like the ghoul was crying. I was him. I felt like I was going to puke. Partners. I didn't hear a word of what Miss Rubin was saying after that. Blah, 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 science fair project, blah, 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 partners, blah, blah. It was like the way grown-ups talk in Charlie Brown movies, like someone talking underwater. Mwah, 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 mwah. Then all of a sudden, Ms. Rubin started pointing to kids around the class. Reed and Tristan, Maya and Max, Charlotte and Jimena, August and Jack. She pointed to us when she said this. Miles and Amos, Julian and Henry, Savannah and... I didn't hear the rest. Huh? I said. The bell rang. So don't forget to get together with your partners to choose a project from the list, guys, said Ms. Rubin as everyone started taking off. I looked up at August, but he had already put his backpack on and was practically out the door. I must have had a stupid look on my face, because Julian came over and said, Looks like you and your best butter partners. He was smirking when he said this. I hated him so much right then. Hello, Earth to Jack Will, he said when I didn't answer him. Shut up, Julian. I was putting my loose-leaf binder away in my backpack and just wanted him away from me. You must be so bummed you got stuck with him, he said. You should tell Miss Rubin you want to switch partners. I bet she'd let you. No, she wouldn't, I said. Ask her. No, I don't want to. Miss Rubin, Julian said, turning around and raising his hand at the same time. Miss Rubin was erasing the chalkboard at the front of the room. She turned when she heard her name. No, Julian, I whisper screamed. What is it, boys? She said impatiently. Could we switch partners if we wanted to? Said Julian, looking very innocent. Me and Jack had this science fair project idea we wanted to work on together. Well... I guess we could arrange that, she started to say. No, it's okay, Miss Rubin, I said quickly, heading out the door. Bye. Julian ran after me. Why'd you do that, he said, catching up to me at the stairs. We could have been partners. You don't have to be friends with that freak if you don't want to be, you know. And that's when I punched him. Right in the mouth.